I need you to tell me what the paper playhouse is. There's a neighborhood, and in the neighborhood there's this random house where this man lives that went crazy. So when you drive by, there's just a random house with a bunch of paper plates on it. The paper plate house is kind of like what you said, an urban legend. It was scary. Uh, we walked up there, we grabbed plates, and we bolted. We got back in the car and pulled off. Well, it's certainly a captivating story, but how much of it is actually true? All throughout high school, I had heard rumors of the elusive paper plate house, but never actually seen it. Which begs the question, does it even exist at all? I've never been to this house before. I don't know what to expect. As far as trying to get an interview with the guy who lives in the house. If he was sitting on his front porch and you walked up to him and asked for an interview, I think it would end poorly for you. So I would advise against it. I've never even seen the dude. Uh, we don't know what it is. Don't you want to know? Hey. No. I've heard it all. It's dangerous. It's stupid. This is a dumb idea to which I respond to everything. Yeah, it probably is. It was back in April of 2021 when I decided I wanted to document the paper plate house. Now obviously I'd heard stories about this, I had heard the rumors of this house with paper plates all on the outside, I'd heard that the guy inside was pretty hostile towards anyone who came near the house, but I'd never actually been there before. With all of this in mind, I called up my arch nemesis, Brett Helms, got a skeleton crew together, and decided to go and find the paper plate house and document everything. Okay, we have arrived at our destination. Levi keeps telling me something about paper plate house. I'm not even sure if that's real. It's kind of ridiculous. Oh, hey. hey, you're already rolling, dude. Look at you. You're doing a great job. Okay, um, let's uh, let's get to a place where there aren't as many shadows. Um, welcome to my house. I've been doing just a little bit of, you know work on um, what we're going to be doing this weekend. Um, we're going to go see if the paper plate house is real. It was mainly just kind of a, um, you know, a myth, if you will. A lot of people talked about it, uh, but I had never, um, I'd never actually been there and I still have not been there. So because it doesn't exist. No, it <laughs> look, here's the thing. I've got pictures, like I've got pictures of plates. People have taken plates from them. That's not what I want. Oh, I see what you're going on. No, that's not, this is totally not it. That's cute. No, okay, look. Whenever you Google paper plate house, nothing comes up, right? I see so. Nothing, it's not, that's not the paper plate house though. It's just interesting to me that nothing comes up. There's nothing on Reddit. There's nothing <laughs> on 4chan. There's nothing on, there's nothing anywhere you can find about it. No information, so. We think you'll get more attention. There isn't any attention because Nobody knows it exists except for, you know, people that are in high school. Brett was obviously skeptical when he first heard the rumors of the paper plate house, as anyone would be when they first hear them. With both of our doubts in mind though, we headed to the coffee co near where I live to meet up with Trent, a high school friend that I had graduated with. Uh, I've already talked to Trent a couple times about the house. He seems a little sketchy about the house so far, but um, we're planning on uh, just getting this short interview really quick, and then we uh, should be good to go and try and find the house. Hey, bud, we're shooting. Um, so you're you're good to just be normal. This is Brett. <laughs> He's my DP. Dude, that setup so cool. <laughs> That's Iona, um, and these are just my um, my friends from UCA, and um, we're just uh, you know here to do this really quick so that you can get out of there and get yeah, to your job. Sure. Whenever you are uh, ready, we can shoot it. You want to sit down somewhere? Yeah, absolutely. I, I just wanted this shot. <laughs> so I, I just kind of want to sum this up as in like, you know, one, one big question. What is the paper plate house? It's something that I was told about in high school. And uh, around here, there's not much to do. So you get bored and, you know, you're a teenager. You get, you get a car, you got friends. And uh, it's just, as far as I know, it's a man. And it's a man who has a mental disability and we were bored, so we went and took advantage of 
whatever he had going on there basically is what it is. I hate to be that guy, but why? <laughs> why would you do something like that? Well, at the t at the, now that I think about it now, I'm like, man, we were just probably bothering that poor guy. But at the time, it, it was the plates. We would go for the plates. The, these plates would be on the outside of the doors and they, they would have all these different things written on them. It, everything that was written on the plate was, it was biblical. It was about the end of the world, about the end times. And I don't know, it kind of gave us a little thrill, a little boost of adrenaline. So it, it was a late night. Uh, we pulled up, there were five of us in the car. I wasn't even gonna go, you know, and they talked me into it. Two of us went up there. And when, when we got up there close to the house, he had the TV on and it was full blast volume. I mean, we could hear it from the outside, like we were inside and there were the plates on the door and we walked up there, we grabbed plates and we bolted. I've heard a lot of rumors, things like he's pulled a gun on people before, or he's sitting outside throwing rocks at people or yelling or looking back at it as a almost 20 year old, as looking back to like what I was doing at 16, it's probably just some dude that likes to put paper plates on his door. And uh, I hope you get to talk to him. I hope so too. And I hope you get to figure out what's going on there. Yeah, you do, man. <laughs> As we wrapped the interview, we hung out with Trent for a little while longer because he was the only one that really knew where the Paper Playhouse was. He was the only one who had been there before. So he wanted to give us a little bit of directions for it. We didn't have an exact address, but we did have a vague radius sort of of where the Paper Playhouse was located. Um, so with that in mind, we hopped into our cars and headed towards that radius. Okay, this is, this is, um, see, I don't recognize this place. I've never turned in here before. I've never needed to go here before. Just keep on using the map and yeah. just go. Keep your eyes peeled for anything, you know, suspicious looking or anything that has, anything that looks strange. Um, I think a lot of this already been inside. What is that? A school? Oh, there's a school one, yeah, in the middle, like in the middle of the neighborhood. Park, somewhere around here, maybe. Okay, wait, what? Hold on, hold on, what is that? What? It's a graffiti house. Okay. Hold on. That, it looks, it kind of looks, it looks weird. It's like a fully like spray painted house. We can go down that way and look. See, we're, we're gonna, we're about oh, to. Oh, you're just, we just, Yeah, we're, okay. we're, we're just going around here and there. Yeah, turn. It's, it's gotta be in this neighborhood somewhere. Oh, you know, those, those guys would probably know. Can you roll down the window and ask them? You wanna come? Hey guys. I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker from UCA. Um, and I was just wondering if you guys knew anything about a paper plate house. Okay, a paper plate house? Is it is it okay is it okay if we if we record this? Yeah, I'm a filmmaker from uh, the University of Central Arkansas. Nice to meet you, Levi. Nice to meet you, Levi. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot. He's lived there since I've lived over here, and mm -hmm. I've been here for about almost 15 years. Yeah. So he's lived there for a while. Uh -huh. um, he's always he just always sits outside, really. He always sits outside. Yeah. yeah. What I have heard from the stories that I've heard, because there's always kids around that want to go like snatch the paper plate. I don't. And, that's not what run. we're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, right. I've, I've had friends that have, have actually talked to the person. Really? I don't. Was, I just, was he like pleasant or was he uh, nice? He, he, I don't know if he was nice or not. He didn't really talk a whole lot, but I, I do have a couple friends who have talked to him and since sat there with him. So we're, we're about to leave here right now, anyway. So I can get in my car and I'll talk to you over there. Right, no, no, like, yeah, absolutely. That would be awesome okay. if you could. Hey, I really appreciate it, guys. Doesn't exist. You're dead. <laughs> it totally <don't> exists. <laughs> they know about it. Yep. Did they help us? They did. Yeah, they're gonna lead us. Oh, they they're gonna lead us there. Yeah. Finally, after about an hour of searching our efforts paid off in the most surprising way possible. It's definitely Paper Playhouse. The, 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 is that paper Playhouse. Holy Wait, crap. Wait, that's... That's the Paper Plate House. Holy oh, crap. Oh my, <laughs> oh my gosh. That's it. Dude, look. Get the shot. Get the shot. There it is. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I got it. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Uh, here, stay, stay, in, stay in the car for this. Here's where things started getting a little strange. Um, whenever we got there, there were two neighbors, at least, outside of their houses that surrounded the paper plate house. Um, there was one guy who was an older man with like scraggly hair working on a tent, and then there was another guy that was getting into his car with his kid about to leave. After we saw the paper plate house initially, um, you know, and we got that little interaction of, oh, there it is, there's the paper plate house, I instantly pulled over. I told Brett, you need to cut camera. I don't want to make these people uncomfortable. Here. Yeah, yeah, come on out with me and we'll... Hey there, sir. 
Hi, I'm my name's my name's Levi Smith. I'm a filmmaker from the University of Central Arkansas. Yeah. It's nice I'm, to meet I'm you. Ziggy. Yeah, yeah. So is it all is it all right if I talk to you for just yeah, a couple yeah, minutes? Yeah. Okay. You know what the whole deal is though, yeah. I I well I don't. Is it is it alright if we is it alright if we have a quick interview with you? Well I can have a quick <laughs> quick interview with me, but I mean, um, let me explain something to you. Because uh, I've, I've only known him for about three years yeah. or so, okay? But when he was um, in his 20s or something, he got in a bike wreck. I see. And, you know, he got plates in his head and stuff like that. And I don't know who put him over here by himself. That's a rundown trailer or whatever. And this lady takes care of him back and forth. He starts writing verses down on his paper plates mm -hmm. to express himself and everything. He puts them on the outside of the house. And I got car people uh, coming through here Friday and Saturday nights. Tons of people coming through. The last time they came through, they were throwing boards and stuff at his house. Oh, and uh, ever since the 4th of July, we were all sitting out here firing off fireworks. She was sitting in the chair right there, and about four dudes came around the corner, and they must have tied some M100s together because it flashed from his house yeah. to my house. I mean, the guy's, you know, I mean, he's a cool dude, really. If he, he just wants to be around people and everything. Ziggy was the one who offered this. He offered to walk us over to the paper plate house so that we could see a little bit more of what it looks like. So as we got up to the paper plate house, we saw just this big long silver trailer house. There was some graffiti written on there. I don't know that it was if it were due to the guy who lives there or if it were due to like vandalizing teenagers. And we also saw the paper plates that were all put around the door. Each and every plate had writing on them in um, marker. And um, on the door itself, there were several pieces of paper that had been duct taped on uh, that each had writing on them as well. It was, uh, it, was, it was weird. It was really weird looking, I'm not gonna lie to you. It would definitely be very scary going there um, in the context of if you were a stupid high school student and you were trying to steal a paper plate for whatever reason and you went there at 3 a.m. at night. I didn't want to interview the guy who owned the house anymore. I didn't really want to give him that kind of exposure. I was okay with maybe us recording pretty low quality shot of his house from afar, um, just so that people could see what it looks like. Uh, but as far as getting up close to the house and showing a lot of the writing that are on the plates, just interviewing him in a raw sit down setting, I just, I didn't feel it was appropriate for this documentary probably just wants to be left alone. I don't know that he would want to do an interview even if I asked him to. But we were able to get an interview with one of his neighbors. We all right to come in, Tony? All right. So, uh, Tony, um, could you just kind of explain to me what, got, what goes on in this neighborhood? Okay, I, I, I go about two years back then. Mm -hmm. And the knuckleheads come by and they want to harass Lewis, which is, is he's a good person, all right? And he's a good man. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not his fault that somebody comes by and want, want to take his paper plates. But if you actually read the paper plates, they're really going to tell you something that you may not even understand. But they do make sense. And Lewis, he bought that place. Uh, some decades ago, when my grandfather's wife's mother passed away. Mm -hmm. Mama Lovell had that house, and me and granddad fixed that house. Now, these guys want to come by and disrespect Lewis. They're also disrespecting something else that they don't even know. Has he, has he always, you know, done, done the, whole, the whole paper plate thing where, where he'll put that? Oh, yeah. On? Yeah, that, that's his release, you know. It's just his thing? That's what he does? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um... And he's not hurting nobody. No, absolutely not. But at night, if, if them knuckleheads come around, I will chase them. Mm -hmm. I'll chase them with, with, with the biggest stick I can find. Yeah. I will. Say, say right now, everybody that was thinking about visiting this house was listening to you right now. What would you tell them? Just be respectful. And Lewis will be respectful. If you're not respectful, Lewis may not be, be respectful. And the neighborhood may not either. Don't disrespect the ground you're walking on because it's not worth it. We've had neighbors that have, have, caught, have caught them in, in a car at, at, at the church over there, and it's like, you know, they let them go. That, that's the thing to do. But, you know, you just need to understand, man. Leave the dude alone. Yeah. Then, yeah, leave Lewis alone. We will. 
So after our interactions with Tony and Ziggy, we thanked them both for all their help and we went on our way. The crew and I had some dinner that night and then we said bye to one another afterwards and um, everybody went their separate ways. Seeing the paper play house in person and hearing the stories behind it was probably one of the more influential experiences of my life. Um, there are so many horror stories about this that I had heard about in high school that when you compare them to the real thing, a lot of it is just fluff and fabrication. For example, there were never any guns pulled on teenagers. That was a rumor that got started by people going to his house on the 4th of July and shooting firecrackers at his house. Another thing, the house is not in the middle of nowhere as I'd heard several times. It's actually in a neighborhood where a bunch of people are there and they are subject to this harassment on a weekly basis. Finally, the person who lives in the paper plate house is not a hostile schizophrenic man who gets his jollies on terrorizing teenagers. It's just some guy named Lewis who had an accident in his younger years and wants all the harassment to stop. His neighbors made it very clear to us that he's a really cool dude and likes to be around people. He just doesn't appreciate it when people trespass and try to steal his property at 3 a.m. Anyone would hate that and nobody deserves that. In a world consumed by media, social media where people upload pictures of things, start rumors, and spread lies about people. It's almost impossible for things like this not to happen. But the fact here is that this is just some guy expressing himself in the best way that he can. And with that in mind, I feel that the safest thing that could come from all of this is that the paper plate house remain an anomaly of Arkansas.